Okay, this is the uh, engine compartment of a 1972 Mustang. Uh, Mach 1 style vehicle. It is not the correct numbers matching engine that came with this car. But what it is, is a built 460. Uh, this thing is just a powerhouse of torque. Uh, fun to drive, really neat car to drive. It does have the uh, Ford uh, cold air induction system on it with the correct air cleaner and rubber seal that houses uh, to the uh, um, cold air induction system. It has the correct radiator in it, high flow, high capacity radiator with the correct shroud and it also a flex fan on it, stainless flex fan. The uh, core support's never been disrupted in any way. The car's never been banged in the nose or bumped in any way. A really great condition car. Uh, it has uh, an Edelbrock 460 Performer intake manifold on it aluminum of course with a Holley a dual feed carburetor and an electric choke on it. It's a vacuum secondary Holley with an electric choke. Really works very well for a street setup. Has a set of cast iron high flow Ford exhaust manifolds that would be original equipment for basically a 429 car that would have come in this installation in 1971-72. Um, power steering, power disc brakes in this vehicle uh, it has a brand new battery. Donnie just put a new battery in it and a new uh, primary cable for it also. It does have the electronic ignition system in it. A uh, new washer bottle. It has a uh, fuel pressure regulator on it with a gauge to tell you the fuel pressure on it. Um, the motor you can see is a, a complete fresh rebuild on this engine. Uh, it's been completely out and, and addressed in every which way. Uh, it has a new water pump also on the front of it. New belts. Uh, new alternator also. Someone has really spent some time um, putting this thing together. And it's a complete Mallory ignition from what I can see also. It has a nice uh, uh, high dollar ignition system in it. Billet distributor. Uh, horn mounted in the front. Uh, just a clean, nice engine compartment. There's no leaks pre uh, present whatsoever at this time. Valve pan covers, the uh, front part of the engine is all completely dry, just the way you'd want it to be. It has a set of high uh, silicone uh, plug wires on it also, which are new. So I'm going to spend a lot of time and a lot of effort to put this car back to an original looking 429 Cobra Jet, um, be a third generation, I guess, uh, Mustang. Uh, just a, a really great, well put together car. It even has the original style. Uh, plastic grating on the uh, cowl area which are normally deteriorated and, and, and fallen apart in some order of disarray anyway. This car does not have it that way. It's just as clean and fresh as can be. Inner fender panels are painted black the way they would be from Ford uh, had the car been produced this way. It, it's just a nice clean straight rust-free engine compartment with a heck of a motor in it. A 460 uh, with a nice uh, RV style cam. It's not over cam. Doesn't need to be with that many inches. Uh, produces a lot of torque, especially with a five-speed Tremec that's in this guy, and uh, just a great car to drive. Really great car. We're going to go around the rest of it for you now. Hi, you're at Hangsters in Daytona Beach, Florida, and today we have a 1972 Mach 1 style uh, Mustang Coupe for you with a 460 in it and a five-speed Tremec. We're going to go over the uh, outside of this car, show you every little defect that we can find on it. At least everything that, that I can see or feel on this car as I go over it. So, here we go. 429 Ram Air designation on the hood. Um, they never put a 460 in these cars. For all intents and purposes, you can't tell it's one by looking at it. But the 460 is just a stroke 429. It says 429 Ram Air, so it would give it a nice originality to it. Anyway, flat black on the hood the way it's supposed to be. A couple of little tiny bumps here in the paint. You certainly wouldn't redo the hood just to fix those couple little tiny spots, but nice flat back finish on the hood, Ram Air designation. Pinstripe just the way it should be, the way Ford did it. The paint on this car is driver quality paint. It is not a foot deep base coat, clear coat show quality paint job, but much nicer than it would have been from the factory in Ford when this car was originally produced. It's a great looking car, great color also, which is the correct color for this car. 
Um, gap from the hood to the front fender, you can see, is just as sweet as could possibly be on both sides. Clean up to the uh, base of the windshield, just as nice as you'd ever hope to find. Uh, the uh, hood locks, pins that uh, Ford's used in this era, uh, just as fresh and clean to chrome on them as you could ever hope. <coughs> Fitment of the hood, a little bit of an adjustment here, but other than that, nice as can be. The um, that doesn't adjust, it seems a little bit loose. We'll have to do that. Uh, the um, parking lights, just as clean and fresh as they could be. The lenses, the uh, plastic grill, there's no windows broken out of it or no chips or marks from stones being thrown up through the ears. The uh, stainless surround, same way, no dinghies whatsoever, just as fresh as can be. The uh, basils around the headlights are black plastic. I don't know how you mess those up unless you hit a had a stone hit it or something. Front bumper is the uh, rubber coated elastomeric bumper that uh, uh, came on this vehicle and if you really look close you'll see a few little tiny, but you got to really look for them, tiny little spider cracks from through the years of being nerfed a little bit and the paint cracking because it is a flexible rubber bumper. A little tiny mark right here that's been brush touched but Again, you certainly would not go ahead and, and uh, redo this front bumper for those tiny few imperfections that you really can't even, can't even really see. The uh, front valance is just as clean as could be, and uh, marker lights under there also, turn signal marker lights, and it has the um, optional front spoiler on it also, and it's not broken or chipped up or distorted in any way. So the front end of this car is just as sweet and nice as you ever have. A few little tiny marks here that you're probably not even going to mess with, and a foot adjustment that we're going to do. And other than that, great front end on the car. Let's see what we can find on the side. Okay, this is the driver's side of our uh, really bright, I guess it's a yellow, it almost has a little tiny bit of a greenish tint to it, but it is a yellow. Paint's very nice on this car, it's certainly better than driver quality, but it's not a show quality paint job. The uh, correct striping on it, side marker lamp in the front, just the way it should be. <coughs> Wheel lip molding, no bingies dingies whatsoever in it, really great condition. And again, look at the fitment of this thing, look at this. The hood to the fender to the door, door fitment is absolutely beautiful. I hope it's going to be like that in the back, I won't have to adjust this one either. Um, trim on the side, very, very nice. Stone bingy right here, through the years something came up and went kerbang, right there there's a little mark. Uh, you can feel it, you really have a hard time seeing it, it really actually didn't dent it very much, just put a chip like on it. Correct wiper, arms, modern style blades, like an Anco uh, plastic blade on it. The uh, dashboard just as clean and fresh and nice as can be, then uh, tag nice and legible just the way it would be from the factory when it was new. Someone has cleaned this up very nicely inside. The um, roof, absolutely no, no marks, no imperfections whatsoever. It just shines like glass, wet glass. Uh, really nice, nice finish on the roof. There's not an imperfection in it. Also, I want to mention the uh, it's just standard glass in the window. I don't believe it's tinted. It's definitely not a sunshade fade type glass. It's uh, uh, just a standard glass in this car. Uh, drip rail, not a single mark on it, absolute perfection on it. And check this out, look at the window fitment, and also no patina here, absolutely none. But look at the window fitment from the side glass to the rear quarter glass, absolute beautiful fitment, there's no way that will ever leak. Wipes whiskers, nice and fresh, just the way you'd hope they'd be, nice and soft and resilient yet. Has a set of sport mirrors on it, which a mock would have. Door fitment, very, very, very nice on this car. Chrome on the door handle, there's no uh, patina whatsoever on it, just as fresh and clean as you'd ever hope to find. And again, our side marker molding here, uh, there's no dents or dinghies whatsoever on it. Of course, it's flat black from here on down. Wheel lift molding on this side, the same as it was in the front. Trim around the back window. Very, very nice. Hatch shelf, you can't see it, but I'm going to point it out to you. There are two aftermarket speakers in it. 
but the hat shelf, rack, tray, whatever you want to call it, is just as fresh and nice as you'd ever hope to find one. There's absolutely no deterioration, no imperfections in it whatsoever. Nice fitment. It's not even faded. It's black and it doesn't even show any fade. Sail panel area, just as nice as you'd hope. Also, I was under this car and this thing is a rust-free car. I believe it originated in California is where the car uh, was sold new and spent most of its life and then of course it was brought here to Florida. Trim on the back here, the same as it was the whole length of the uh, vehicle. Side marker lamp, nice flush fitment, the same way in the back as it was in the front. And, well, down the side of this car, it just, it, it's laser straight. There is not an imperfection in this vehicle down the sides. A couple little, I think I detected a couple little brush touches, and I mean little brush touches. You can hardly even, well, you're not going to see them. I, I could feel them where they were touched, but that was it. No dents, no imperfections in it, just a couple small brush touches through the years. 15-inch road wheels on it. Uh, Magnum 500s Ford called them. Uh, of course, they were originated by Chrysler, too. But anyway, uh, uh, Ford used them as a Magnum 500 and a great set of uh, BFG tires on them, white letter TAs. Seems like everyone's choice of these tires at this point in time. Uh, chrome's very, very nice on them, not absolutely perfect. A couple little tiny uh, sections of patina in here where water's laid through the years, but certainly nothing that would detract from the overall appearance of the vehicle. And the, 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 the chrome is just a, a nice, brilliant, uh, foot deep finish on it. So you got set of uh, uh, Kelsey wheels on this thing, Magnum 500s, and BFG tires also. A huge set in the back, which it needs. Um, let's go out back so we can show you there. Okay, it's the rear section of our uh, Mach 1 style Mustang. Uh, obviously it's got a rear spoiler on it, semi-flat black, the way it would have been from the factory. And again, look at the paint on this car, and look at the fit of the uh, rear deck. Same deal, like an eighth of an inch on each side and down the sides of it. It's just as nice as you'd ever hope to find. Flat black, striping, Mach 1 designation. Lenses and trim around the uh, tail lights. Very nice, no cracks, uh, no fading whatsoever. And also the trim surround here is just as nice as you'd ever hope to find. This is plastic and it's uh, it kind of it mimics what you have up front in the grill, only it, it, it's on the back section here. Only this one, instead of have perforations, it just has false holes in it. But it, it does look like the front grill. It gives it a nice character uh, to it. Of course, Ford's quick fuel, uh, quick release gas cap for the fuel system. Rear bumper. Further out on that end than that end, that's got to go in about, oh, about a half inch anyway. Yeah, about a good half inch, this guy has to go in just a little tiny bit. Uh, but the chrome on the back bumper is just as fresh and clean as you could possibly hope to find. Rear Valance has no pulls or, or uh, imperfections whatsoever in it. It has the correct style slash cut stainless tips uh, on it, which we just had put on. Uh, it has a, a fresh exhaust system on it. Uh, great rear section of this car. I mean, the fit, the finish, everything on this car is just as, uh, as good as you'd ever hope to find on a car. A couple little bubbles on that uh, black part in the front, adjust the hood, and uh, tweak this bumper in just a hair. And that's all we found so far. So certainly nothing that requires a lot of attention. A little tiny bit, but not much. Uh, let's do one more side, and then we're done. Okay, the last section of the car, passenger side. Side marker light, the same as it was with the other two, and our trim piece on the side also the same way. Trim around the back window. Dinghy here. I can seal it, see it, but I can't feel it. There's a, also a little tiny dip there. Yeah, I can see it. I just can't quite feel it. Probably when the uh, trim was being installed, because it is nice and tight with the uh, body lines and the glass. Everything is the way it should be. There's certainly nothing loose on it. Probably during the installation, someone got a little overzealous there with their rubber hammer, but certainly nothing that you would uh, go back and address. It, it's fine the way it is. Trim around the uh, 
rear wheel, and no one's modified these fender wells, no one's cut anything up through the years, this is all tin. There's no Bondo anywhere in this vehicle. Again, our roof is just absolutely flawless. Uh, look at this door too, it's amazing. It's totally, totally amazing. Drip rail, same as it was on the other side, no imperfections. That was weird, maybe this is tinted glass, I don't really know. It looks darker on the side windows than it is in the front. The front appears to be clear windshield, the sides appear to be uh, tinted. And so does the back. Huh, that's weird. Anyway, it's got glass in it. Uh, rubber molding, whiskers, wipes, just as nice as you'd hope to find. It does have the right hand mirror, which is a great addition to any vehicle. No patina on this handle either. And again, the door fitment, look at that. Totally amazing. And no dingy bingies whatsoever in this trim on this side either. I can feel a couple, I don't see them, but I can feel a couple of little tiny brush touch, brush touch, a couple more brush touches. Again, doors being opened at the Walmart through the years, probably. Front door, front of the door to the front fender, again, just as at the other side, was just as nice as can be. Uh, Mach 1 Mustang designation on it, the correct rectangular base uh, Ford antenna that was along with this car, but look again here, look at this. The fit of this thing is just totally exemplary. Trim around the front window. Another little hammer mark here. I can feel this one, but I can't see it. But it's there. Trim on the nose. Okay, all four uh, wheel lift moldings. No dents whatsoever. Again, our magnums on the side. Uh, side marker lamp in the front. Nice and flush as it was with the other three. And the striping is just absolutely gorgeous on this vehicle. The front bumper fitment is spot on on both sides. <coughs> um, it's a great looking Mustang. It's a fantastic color combination. Uh, it presents itself as a 429 Cobra Jet Ram Air 72 Mustang. Um, fantastic car. It runs like it should. It's a 460, not a 429, from what we're told anyway. We really don't know without measuring bore and stroke on these things, which we're not going to do. The, uh, the car itself handles, drives, does everything it's supposed to, has steering, brakes, five-speed Tremec, Kelsey wheels, Magnum 500s, BFG white letter tires, a great paint job, great color combination. Uh, I don't know what more you'd want and what you're really going to be surprised at, at what you can buy this vehicle for. Uh, we try to market vehicles for everyone's budget. You know, yeah, we have six-figure vehicles. We do have $100,000, $200,000 vehicles in the building. But we also try to bring people together with cars that we can sell them for under $30,000 or around $30,000. And that's where you're going to be in this guy. So whenever you look at your Hangster's website, Check this guy out because it's an absolute bargain for what it is. We're going to finish the video, but what we try to do is encourage everyone to come down and look at these cars in person so that you can drive it, feel it, go over it. You and I can go over the car together and we can put it up on a rack. You can look at the undercarriage. You can see that there's no deterioration. There's no issues whatsoever structurally with the car. Uh, but if you can't, that's why Devin's giving you 100 photos of this car, or at least 90. Sometimes he gets... 100, I guess, is the limit he can put on there, but he always makes sure you have at least 90 high-resolution photos to go ahead and study uh, this car in its entirety so that you know exactly what you're purchasing here at Hangsters in Daytona Beach. But check out the video and check out the uh, uh, pictures that he has online, and somebody's going to get a great car. It's down here in Daytona Beach. Okay, this is the uh, interior of our uh, 72 Mach 1 style Mustang, 429 460 I guess actually but it shows itself to be a 429 Cobra Jet Ram Air Mustang and it acts like it too. Uh, the headliner in it is nice and fresh and clean and absolutely brand new. Uh, sun visors the same way there's uh, no loose stitching whatsoever nice padded uh, area on them no fade whatsoever in a mirror just as fresh as can be and it's a day night mirror. Forgot to mention when I was up on top outside uh, there's no imperfections on this dash pad whatsoever. It's nice and resilient and fresh. 
uh, just as clean as can possibly be. There's no warpage or, or cracks, nothing whatsoever in it. It has an aftermarket steering wheel in it, a little smaller diameter, uh, gives it a little higher uh, steering resolution than a larger wheel would. Um, dash itself is very, very nice and clean. Someone has installed in the dash cluster a tachometer. It looks like an autometer tack, um, and it's uh, white numbers, white designations on a black background, just like the speedometer. So it actually matches the speedometer with the red needle and everything just the way Ford has on the speedometer. So what I'm saying is it didn't come with a tack. It's got one now. Uh, it has a fuel gauge in the center of it here. It has a uh, temp gauge installed on the side here. And they're actually angled toward me too, so someone spent a lot of time figuring this out. It has a oil pressure gauge and a voltmeter also. It has an aftermarket radio in it, a CD radio. I have no idea if it works or not. Um, the uh, interior has a basket weave center section to the seat just the way it would be from Ford. And the same thing with the back. Back seat does match the front seat just uh, absolutely flawlessly. They are the high back pockets that belong in this vehicle. You can see the dome light is functioning also. The uh, door panels, as new. There's absolutely no uh, scuff marks from uh, being get, gotten in and out of through the years and, and shoes scraping on them. The uh, hardware on the door itself is just as clean and fresh and shiny as you'd ever hope to find. Uh, window cranks in the front, are just, they are the original ones too. They still have the original type uh, uh, yellowing plastic uh, uh, knobs on them. It has a uh, adjustable remote mirror on it. Shoulder belts. It has seat belts in the front and it also has a shoulder belt system for it. So you have a three point on the front here. Uh, nice, nice setup. You'll need it in this guy. has a set of uh, Mustang floor mats in it, front and back. Loop pile carpeting, just the way it would be correct for uh, uh, a Mustang of this era. The sill, kick plate sill moldings are just as fresh and clean as can be. They've been replaced with new Ford items. There's no deterioration whatsoever to them, absolutely none. Big glove box that doesn't want to open. There it is. Uh, in the dash, a uh, real nice big glove box. Everything's still as nice as can be there. A mini console. I love that name, mini. <laughs> a mini console. It doesn't have the full entire length console, but Ford called this a mini console. And it, it served a nice purpose. It gave you a nice enclosure for the uh, boot and the shifter itself. And speaking of shifters, check this out. Five-speed Tremec. How much better can it get than that? You got a Hurst uh, T-handle on it, uh, a tack, um, a 460 with a cam in it. I'm just thinking, what could you do with this thing? You could have a lot of fun. Uh, rubbers on the doors are nice and fresh, nice and resilient. Also, the ones that seal up on the window the same way. Door jams, just as clean and fresh as you'd ever want to see. Devin will have pictures of all this to show you. And again, it has the lap belts, but also has a shoulder belt system in it. So this car is just an absolute knockout car especially for the money you're going to buy this thing for. You're going to be really surprised at what you can buy this car for. Um, it, it's a car that will uh, uh, make you smile for a long time. has a great sound to it, tons of power. You'll never ask for any more than this thing has. And uh, it's, it's just very well put together. All your uh, uh, panels fit as they should. A couple little adjustments, a couple little tiny brush touches and imperfections in it. But you're not paying fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars for this car either. Check it out and see what you can buy this for here at Hangsters in Daytona Beach. Okay, this is the uh, interior of our '72 Mach One. Uh, really neat car. Got a horn, a beep beep horn. So you got a Roadrunner horn in a uh, Mach One. Sounds good though. Uh, everybody copies Mopar. Got a tack that's working as it should. Automator tack, really nice functioning tack. Fuel gauge functioning as it should, between a quarter and a half tank of fuel. We just started the car, so it's uh, just starting to come up temperature-wise, you can see. Uh, oil pressure nice and high the way it's supposed to be. Uh, about 14 volts of uh, 
uh, voltage being charged here, so we're in good shape. Uh, let's see what else we got. I got to show you that this is just so neat. You can't see out of the back window just because of the design of these cars, but check this out. You put it in reverse, and look what happens. You have a rear camera. Take it out of reverse, it goes off. Put it in reverse, it goes back on. You got a rear camera that shows you where you're backing. Is that slick or what? And it's hooked up to the gear shift. I like that. Devin, I don't have a clue on this radio. Do you know how to put it on? See if it works or not? Here? Well, it's definitely making some noise back here. I can't find a station, but there it is. Okay, radio does function. I don't know how to shut it off, so I just turned it down. All right, turn signal. Left turn signal showing this. Uh, it is definitely uh, blinking to the left. Right turn signal is going to be over here, and it's turning for us also. Okay, windshield wipers. If I were a wiper, where would I be? There we go. Windshield wipers functioning as they should. Okay, uh, everything's working as it should. Let's go for a ride. I know it runs good because I drove it already. Uh, it's a nice running car. It's a nice tight running car. No hands on the wheel. I gotta aim it right. No hands on the wheel. The car goes down the road just as straight as an arrow. Absolutely no. Still no hands on the wheel. I mean, this thing is just as nice a running car. Let's wait till these cars go by. I'll put uh, brakes no hands. Okay, brakes no hands. Doesn't pull. Stops just as straight and smooth as can be. And the guy behind me is really getting upset. Nice smooth shifter. Really nice tight car. The, the steering is very precise. You can see that. Got a little smaller wheel on it, a little smaller diameter. It gives it a little more resolution. But the car itself just goes down the road just as straight and nice as you'd ever hope to. There's no shakes, shimmies, rattles, squeaks, nothing, nada. Nice running car. You can have a lot of fun with this for a little bit of money. Give it a little squirt out here for you. Car pulls like a freight train. Lots of torque. Lots of torque. Nice tight, nice shifting. Very tight shifter in it. No rattle, squeak, shakes, nothing. It's a car that you can take and use every day. Go down the road, straight as an arrow. Just don't have any issues at all with it. It's a nice car. If you're in the market for a Mustang, air grabber hood on it, uh, Kelsey wheels, Magnum wheels. Uh, great color combination. Everything seems to work in it as it should, even the radio. And you got a backup camera. You have it because you can't see out the back window anyway. It's a nice straight car. It's here at Hangsters in Daytona Beach and very, very nominally priced. If you look at this car and see what you can buy it for, you're going to be writing a check faster than you can uh, even think about it. Well, this is the underside of our 1972 Mach 1 style Mustang with a big hammer 460 in it. Uh, you can see the engine is fresh. Every, the paint's not even discolored on it yet. It is a brand new fresh engine in it. It does have the standard cast iron exhaust manifolds on it. Uh, they go into this set of, uh, I'm going to call them two and a half inch primary uh, tube uh, header pipes on it. It has a, uh, a heavy duty sway bar in the front like a mock wood. It has heavy duty disc brakes in the front. Nice thick uh, rotors on it. The calipers are nice and fresh looking, and so is the hardware associated with it. Uh, appears to be a new uh, Pitman arm, new idler arm. This car is really exemplary underneath. It's very, very nice. Got a chrome oil pan. I don't know what that does for horsepower, but it, it shines something nice anyway. The um, cradle, the engine cradle, has a couple of little tiny marks from jacks through the years, but that's it. 
the uh, radiator, the, all the associated uh, framework in the front is totally undisrupted. This car has never been punched in the nose, ever, ever. Uh, subframe sections in the front, uh, all the spot wells are still evident where the uh, torque boxes transition onto them. The uh, fender, uh, inner fender liners where they come down and, and transition onto the torque box, just as fresh and clean as you'd ever hope to find. Has a scatter shield on it, Lakewood style. I don't know the actual manufacturer, but it appears to be a Lakewood style uh, scatter shield with a whole bunch of grade 8 uh, bolts holding together. Five-speed Tremec transmission in it. Really nice shift to tranny in this guy. Has a uh, new gear reduction starter on it. Again, the subframes on this thing are just exemplary. There are absolutely no marks whatsoever on them. Absolutely none. Parking brake cable, still original and hooked up and functional. Uh, let's see. Jeez. Uh, original fuel line. You see the brake lines? Yes, they are. There's the original brake lines going toward the back. The uh, floors on this are the original floors. They have not been uh, replaced, nor do they need to be. They still retain a lot of the uh, splatter, sound deadener, sealer that Ford used way back when, whenever these cars were produced, and that's still present on these floor pans at this point. It has a um, new U joint in the back, no leaks whatsoever on the uh, tail shaft area or the transmission or the engine or the bell housing. You can see everything at this point is absolutely positively leak free at this point. Two years down the road, it's a muscle car. There's going to be a drip on the floor, guaranteed. The um, subframes are connected with a set of really stout looking subframe connectors. Um, I don't know the manufacturer of these. That's the first time I've seen a set like this on a Mustang. But they're really nice rectangular tubing, have a lot of structural rigidity to them. Nice set of connectors. Very, very nice set. Um, Flowmaster mufflers. A uh, real nice set of Flowmasters on it. Uh, you can see the exhaust system is totally as new condition. Uh, I, I just I can't imagine that... Uh, being very old. It doesn't show any wear whatsoever on it. The pipes themselves are still shiny in the back. I'm going to call them two and a quarter going out. They're two and a half going in. They might even be two and an eighth. Two and an eighth maybe going out from the uh, back of the mufflers. Nine inch Ford heavy duty rear end. Drum brakes at the back. Multi leaf rear suspension on this vehicle. Uh, the way Ford designed it way back when. The uh, gas tank appears to be a replacement gas tank, and it's uh, too shiny to be the original one. It has a uh, electric fuel pump mounted uh, in the back here uh, for the, uh, the, 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 the tank. Uh, air shocks in the back. You know what? I forgot to look at the shocks in the front. New, uh, new shocks in the front of this vehicle also. It appears to be an aftermarket uh, set of uh, front springs on it also. Uh, the um, shocks in the back are air shocks and they're also new. Lines and all the associated hardware with them are just as clean and fresh as you'd want. The um, exhaust tips are the correct style exhaust tips that uh, would have come on this car had it been released with the uh, big block in 1972, 71-72. Uh, 71 was the first of this body style after the change. 70 was the last of the yellow one. Uh, really a fantastic car underneath. I really don't see anything on this car that uh, is a negative. One thing I did notice that I did not mention on the interior presentation. It has a little screen on the dashboard and it also has, it's hooked up to the shifter, uh, it has a rear camera in it. So there's a license plate frame on the back of this car because on this style, 71, 72 Mustangs, when you look out the back window, you don't see anything. Uh, the window's almost uh, uh, horizontal, so you, there's almost no visibility, but it does have a rear camera, so you can see exactly where you're backing up. Kind of a neat feature. Obviously not stock, but a nice add-on in this particular reason. No rear visibility. Uh, the undercarriage of this car is just as clean and fresh as you'd ever hope to find. I can't imagine it being any nicer. Um, there's a pull on the subframe here where through shipping someone has tightened it down too much. And they did the same thing here. They really pulled it, actually tore it a little tiny bit here. 
on the uh, subframe. It doesn't hurt it structurally, but it does uh, it does show that someone might be as tight as they really had to be tightened down. Uh, the rest of the subframes are just as nice and fresh and clean and rust free uh, as you'd ever hope to find. It's got a nice fresh round of rubber on it. And again, you can see a lot of originality, the floor pans being original, the uh, uh, whole undercarriage of this car being totally rust free. It's a nice looking Mustang and it's very reasonably priced. It's something that if you're in the market for a neat toy that makes lots of noise and goes pretty fast, uh, you might want to take a look at this one because it's a uh, built 460 in a uh, uh, 72 Mustang chassis, uh, Mach 1, and uh, it, it's available here at Hanksters. And you've got a nice car here to take a look at.